So previously I was actually a teacher for about six years. I totally had like no training. So that's for like when I decided to do this line. Like I started as an intern. I never settled for stability anyway. The minute I spent 50k just to learn acting and survive on my own in New York, I knew my motivation wasn't money. Today we are here to talk about career changes and um, I think which is why I'm here lah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know why I did this gesture but I'm like, oh. Because usually I'm like behind the camera. So previously I was actually a teacher for about six years. Okay. And then um, what subject? Geography. <laughs> you look like a geography teacher. <laughs> really? Like, I was like, like, like math or geography. Away. I don't know, maybe the spec. So then after that, I just decided to take one year gap to figure out what is it that I want to do next. I totally had like no training. So that's for like when I decided to do this line, I really started from scratch. Like I started as an intern. Uh, what about yourself? Like what were you doing such that you did a career change? Actually, I feel like my career change is not as drastic. I guess that's what people would think. But to me, it's very drastic. So I, I was working in TSL back then when they threw me in the video. And I had zero knowledge of how to even talk. Well, it must be very stressful, eh? Very. Right. Literally, I have the video where the producer is asking me, so where are we going, senior? I was like, I, I, I don't know, y'all haven't told me. <laughs> and they just put it oh, in, no. you know? Then afterwards, when I reached, like, maybe the level where I, I was comfortable being a host, mm. then, then I, uh, when you reach the point already, then you feel like oh, you're like stagnant already. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't know what else I want to do. Then that's when um I had a chance to act in a short film. Mm. But that was the only video that I couldn't finish watching myself. Why? Because I feel like it was very bad. Like you hated the way hated, you Hated, hated. It's like I couldn't believe myself. So going back to how I did a career switch was literally because I couldn't watch myself and I hated that I'm not good at it. So I went to New York to study acting. Mm, were you yeah. interested in it? I think I was curious about it. You had to quit to do this or? I took sabbatical and halfway through the course, I told my boss I'm going to quit my job. My full-time job. Oh, were they yeah. expecting it? I think he was very understanding and I, I did tell him that I think sometimes you overgrow like the content that you used to love. Mm. And it's not that the content is not good. It's just that now I prefer watching content that is like, I don't know, will evoke certain emotion and not just make me laugh. When did you start to feel like, oh, I'm frustrated at this situation? I think it wasn't frustration. It was... So the last job scope that I was in TSL Mm. back then, before I left, was being a mentor to the younger students. Uh, students? Talents. (laughs) Sorry, sorry. (laughs) You vibe over the teacher vibe. teacher. (laughs) And then I realised that I'm helping all of them achieve their dreams. But it seemed like I was putting a pause on my own. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So then I realised that like, yeah, I was still young. Like, maybe I should go and try again. How did New York come into play though? Why out of all places, New York? Because I love watching Friends. <laughs> I'll be there <laughs> for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Was it like really as ideal as you thought? No. <laughs> So fast answer. Most people would think that, oh, Zina is going to New York to study acting. Mm. Then she's going to come back to Singapore, ma, right? Mm. It's, it's not like she's going to pursue something. But actually, deep down, something that I've never told anyone and I too paise to tell people is that I think a very naive part of me want to believe that if I work hard enough, like someone on the street la, on like, I don't know la, at Times Square will see the potential in me and hopefully will sign me and I'll never go back to Singapore. Hmm. Yeah, and, and this part, I, I'm too embarrassed to even like say it out because like people will be like, what the hell, who are you? You know, like you think you were Emma Stone, la, that kind. I guess New York is a place that, you know, opened up that bubble for me but also broke it at the same time. Like burst that bubble right in my face. Hmm. And I sign up for a master course where I get to meet agencies in New York. Like the most basic thing I don't even know, which is headshot. You have to have it professionally taken. You know what kind of photos I use or not? Ah, your NRIC, oh, that kind of. Is no, it? Ah, the Instagram <laughs> kind. Oh, you're Wait, I just sent <laughs> screenshot. 
And then the... <laughs> wow, it was brutal, man. I was just like, sorry, sorry. So after the whole like CV and headshot, right? You audition right in front of the person. I went all out, tears, everything. Like I never felt so like, what passionate about acting. So I asked him like, can you tell me how hard it is for a foreigner to make it in New York? And he said, I can tell you some actors even marry for the green card. That's how competitive it is. And after I woke out of the first class, I, I was I was crying at, on time, like at Times Square. And at that point of time, just imagine like a young girl who is very, very naive. Like how long did you stay there before you came back? Oh, I literally come back because my visa cannot really. When I came back to Singapore and I tried traditional media, right? That is the career switch. It's so different. I was so scared. Because the team is so big. Back then in YouTube, like, for example, you see your dear friend here, right? She's Ooh. the DOP. She do the sound. She probably oh. also set up the light for you. And I'm so used to all of that, you know? Because right. we're all friend friend. Like, probably mm. you as a host, you also help them. Like, yeah, do we the set up. Yeah, yeah, yeah this but is no, important. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but when I started acting for traditional media, everybody got their single job scope yeah. and they are so good at what they do. Yeah. So I think like seeing how many people are there on set scares me really. It's very intimidating. Oh. Yeah, so I started from scratch. Right. Really started from scratch. I always acted as someone's friend. Um, and <laughs> actually until now I'm still acting as someone's friend right? it's okay la, that's the credits I'm one's friend really and it's like you work 13 hours a day you earn it's like I've I've never seen that rip before are you tempted though like to go back because it's also easy for you to I don't know if it's easy la, mm. to just go back so it's funny because in my head right when I was in New York I always feel like I want to be Emma Stone it's like, the, I just want to focus on acting or focus until I'm so good at it, right? I don't need all the digital media stuff. I don't need to do ads anymore. You come in Singapore, cannot lah. Like, really cannot sustain, especially when you're starting from scratch. Then I realised I need to have the best of both worlds. So I still have to do my digital media stuff. Mm. That is for money. That is also my passion lah. So you're doing like 50% of it. Like, mm. do you feel like you backtrack on that dream that you had? Yes. And I also feel like I own self limit myself in the digital media space where I took off to New York when I was at my peak where I had ambassadorships coming in. So so it's like I feel like I backtrack both sides but no regrets. Why then? Because I never settled for stability anyway. Yeah. Mm. The the minute I left my full time position, I knew like I, I wasn't going for stability the minute I spent 50k just to learn acting and survive on my own in New York I knew my motivation wasn't money I think also like quitting kind of like closes that door it forces you now that this is the thing that you have chosen mm. yeah like yeah. say for teaching that time I also had to like quit but it was like a bit different like, I didn't know what I wanted to do How you never hang in there until you decide what you are interested to do next I feel like in teaching, I have no time to see what I'm interested in. Like, it's right. a very physically, emotionally, mentally like draining job. I sort of also left like on a, at the peak also. Like I was a subject hit then. And it was like pretty accelerated, la, becoming a subject hit at that age. And so people was like, you sure you want to leave now? Mm. You know? And, but I also told myself, like, if I don't leave now at this age, because that time I was 29. Mm. Yeah, if I don't do this before I was 30, right? and I stay in teaching longer. Then you won't leave ready, is it? Correct, because the kind of pay that you have, um, then you ask me like 30 plus, go and find another job to match this pay. Very hard already. But why I left was, like you, I just wanted growth. It's like the world was so big out there and just, I really just wanted to like put myself out there to try lah. Then was it scary when you like, like see the world? Because oh. I feel like yours even braver, yeah. You just like, you know what, I'm gonna quit, but I don't know what I like, but it's okay, I'll find out. Yeah. Crazy, right? Yeah. At least I kind of already like you yeah. know, plan. So yeah, there's always a crazier person. <laughs> <laughs> so when you step out, is it really a whole new world? Yeah, and and because like I taught geography, so the thing I always wanted to like find out more was about farming. So I went to do woofing, which is like voluntary farming uh, in New Zealand. Mm. Oh, yeah, so I was okay. there for about nine months. Then I also did like a, docu a short documentary video about like how they 
build this farm. Um, then through that, I realized, oh, I kind of like documenting stuff. Like maybe I can try journalism. And that's how like, yeah, now I'm in OGS um, mm. doing documentary videos. But the biggest sacrifice is definitely income. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, because I also told you like I was the oldest intern at my previous uh, company. Mm. And then starting from scratch in a totally different industry, um, your pay really starts from zero. La, and like you have to climb your way back up. I would say like the fear of staying was actually greater than the fear of leaving. So at the end of the day, right, I feel like we can always be very envious of what people have mm. and ultimately what's most important to you. Do you want the financial gains or do you want the learning experience? Mm. Yeah, so that's why I also like feel like, okay, like, I don't regret what I did. Because for people like us, like, probably my age, it, we always think about, okay, how long is enough for us? How long no, is long is enough coming for up, us? You're 26 already, right? Right. About um, <laughs> either this year and... Okay. <laughs> Wait, let me count. Or to, like to leave my year, job? No. Oh, <laughs> oh no. but you just joined, right? <laughs> yeah, but she just joined. So a bit different. <laughs> yeah, I also don't feel like there's a right time. I feel like it, it's very dependent on like what you are motivated towards. So for both of us, we are motivated um, to work towards growth. Mm, yeah. Right? I think it is heavily dependent on your goal or like what you innately want like was there a moment that you guys realized that okay the switch that i made is the right choice and what what if i still don't know if it's the right choice oh my god i'm just about to say it <laughs> i still don't know i, I honestly, yeah, still, I honestly know. still don't know eh. that's why i point to you because i don't know how to answer this question <laughs> i'm glad you agree yeah. with me. <laughs> i'm still like experiencing the the pros and cons of making that decision uh, like four years back mm. so um but am i glad i made that decision yes because then i wouldn't have had the experience of doing the work that i do now um and like making documentaries like if you told me i, I was going to be doing this like four years ago in new zealand i'd be like are you crazy mm. yeah very 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 similar Okay, it's it's not a regret thing, but it's more so how would my life look like if I didn't like sacrifice so many things to go and learn a new skill. It's just like mm, you just consider like you in another multiverse, you know? Yeah, you just correct. About it. correct. Yeah. And even if next time I don't pursue acting, it's just a decision that I didn't regret at that point of time and it's enough for me. What would you say is your biggest takeaway from making this career switch? I feel like every stage of your life, you need to learn to unlearn and learn new things. I think people always stress on learning new things, but I think unlearning is probably the biggest lesson I've learned going into this career switch. Yeah, I'm just glad that I went overseas uh, before I did that career change because then I understood how the pace of life can be so different. Like, you know, in Singapore, it's really all about like, uh, making sure you're advancing all the time. But when I was in New Zealand, I realised I don't need money to be happy. Like, you can just like take a walk in the park and yeah, life is life is great. Oh, I just feel like the experience that I had cannot be bought with money. Lah. And that if in future, I feel again that there's no growth and that I need to uh, find myself, yeah, I can always take this gap year again and it will be less scary this time because it won't be the first time. It's definitely privilege also. Um, I have to admit that um, But it was also the Sacrifice that I made lah. Yeah, That I think was worthwhile I think it is really insightful to hear from both of you That you know, making a switch In career There might not be a right time for it As long as you know what you're doing And what matters most to you If you enjoyed today's episode Don't forget to give us a thumbs up And subscribe to us and if you happen to see us on the streets next time, feel free to join us for some tea. Although today we are in our office, but we will still be on the streets next time. So, to the next one. Bye-bye. I eat the cake now. Go okay. for it. Uh